Hello, and welcome, friends. Today we're talking about Starstock. This is a site that I introduced to you with my three smart new ways to buy sports card videos a little while ago. It's quite popular among YouTube sports card guys and a lot of them are using it to great success. Part of my job as a professional poker player was to notice patterns and when I see these patterns pop up with Starstock, it's kind of got me a little bit worried. Now full disclosure, I do better if Starstock does better. I do flip cards, a lot of you do, I use ComC, I use eBay, I buy, I sell, I'm constantly in the market making moves. If we have a site like Starstock that is providing this opportunity to buy and sell instantly these physical sports cards, I will benefit from that. So I'm not in any way saying anything in this video to just piss all over Starstock or tell you don't use Starstock. I just have some concerns about the site in general and a few things that are eh, less than optimal, let's say. Starstock claims to have rookie cards only on the site. That way the customer can come to the site and know that they're getting a rookie card. The the problem with that is that there are non-rookie cards floating around the site. I happened to be looking at Jared Allen because I saw his price increase in the main infographic and I said, cool, let me see what his cards are up to because I love Jared Allen, y'all know that. So I go and I'm checking out, I'm like, whoa, that's a nice looking select. Wait a minute, that's a 2018 select. Somebody selected a card that wasn't a rookie and put it on the site. The second thing is that they're slightly rude to customers. I asked them why they were asking you to pay up front for PSA graded cards going from your Starstock account to PSA. The price is $30, which is a little high to begin with, but I was told so that they don't have to chase you down. You have to pay for your grade up front that you're not going to see the card for nine months. I mean, that's a pregnancy, man. Perhaps you should give birth to a better experience for users. Why would I have to pay you up front for that card to be sent to PSA. It just doesn't make sense to me that you would have to chase around your customers looking for payment because if I'm paying you $30 to get a card graded, you can be damn sure that I'm gonna be the one chasing you around to get that card back. It's just not a good look. It's not a good way to talk to customers. It sounds condescending. You're not the sports card mafia because I don't wanna have to chase you down to get that payment. Chase me down? I'm paying you 50% over market. You could do a little work on your end. Not only that, but they have this weird sort of theoretical grading system of A, B, and C, and a lot of the A prices are commanding more than your base eBay card. Now that is probably warranted because on eBay, some of them can be graded at a PSA 10, and some of them look like PSA 1s. The guys at Starstock aren't professional graders, and more so, they do not guarantee any grade. If you take a Starstock A, and you pay them $30 to get it sent for grading, and it comes back a PSA 6, they hold no liability. So if you can't trust what a star stock A, B, or C may mean, then what does it actually mean? Star stock A should be something around a 9 or a 10 and nothing else. A star stock B, in my mind, would be something like a 7 or 8, at least a near mint card. And then a star stock C would be anything that's a PSA 6, which is excellent mint, or worse. But without having any sort of a sample size, we have no idea at this point. So why are the prices so high for the star stock A? It's the perception of graded value of which we have no actual basis. There is no hard asset to compare this with because it's all theoretical. I also don't really like that they're only selling rookie cards, which gives the site a very limited selection of what cards are available to the casual user. The collector is who is going to end up with the cards at the end of the day. And it's whatever is valuable to them and whatever gives them the best experience that Starstock should be focused on because they are the ones that will lubricate the site. If you have a site full of nothing but flippers trying to outmaneuver each other based on sports card trends and new information, it's not going to work in the end. That is not sustainable. You need collectors that don't plan on selling their cards. They are the ones who pay the most, most of the time. And not only that, you don't actually get a picture of the card that you're purchasing. It only comes along with the A, B, or C star stock theoretical grade, which means you don't see the actual card. I wanna see the scan of the exact card I'm buying. The shipping price to cash out your cards is a bit crazy. It's reasonable at a flat $5 fee and 50 cents per card, but 
But as you get a larger and larger amount of cards to withdraw, that price doesn't go down. If there's 125 cards that you want to cash out, it's going to cost you $77. That's what it says in their withdrawal information. $77? I could get 125 cards sent for $12 to $15 and maybe even less. Now, I talked to Brendan from Starstock and I asked him about it. I said, hey man, is it really going to take this long for me to get my cards? Why is the shipping price so high? When I asked about the price to ship cards home along with the wait time to see if it was accurate, this is the response I got from Brendan at Starstock. Hey Chris, thank you for reaching out and we really appreciate your support. If you wanted only two cards shipped home, Home, it would not take us eight weeks, it would probably take us closer to three or four weeks. In regards to our pay scale for shipping cards home, I get where you're coming from, but with that being said, it will take one person an entire day to pull 125 cards while not working on any other orders, which is why our pricing format is the way that it is. We really appreciate your support, Chris. If you have any other question, if you have any other question, please don't hesitate to reach out. What we have here is a case of two wizards behind the curtain. You see, I pick, pack, and ship cards all the time for my eBay store, and I can tell you with exact accuracy that there is no way it's going to take someone all day to pick 125 cards. At most, it would take a couple of hours, and that's part of your job. So to say that that's something that he has to do and he can't work on these other things is a lot like you saying I have to pay you $30 up front because you don't want to have to chase me down. What kind of work do you guys want to do? I don't mind paying up for shipping. I know it takes time to pick cards and pack them and ship them, supplies, everything else. I understand that, but there's a diminishing returns to the cost of shipping and paying somebody $77 for a $12 ship is just way too much on top, especially considering the fact that I have to wait up to two months to get my cards. And the cash out interface kind of looks like uh, you're taking a survey on BuzzFeed or something like that. I mean, come on, man. You guys are asking me for all this information that you should already have. Liquidity is important. To be able to get access to the cards physically is going to be an important feature for collectors, the people who will lubricate this site so that the flippers can flip. We need the collectors to collect. And if the collector knows that he has to wait two months and pay all this money to get a card, he's going to be less likely to use the site. And there's another big problem that I see with only taking rookie cards. And that, my friends, is market saturation. You're already starting to see it. You see a rookie card, it'll be a prism and there will be like 75 or 80 of them. What are you going to do when a casual guy comes in there and looks and he sees 80 of them? It gives the perception that there's too many and they're not really in demand. So unless that guy really wants that card for his PC, he might be turned off to that. What about when you're a flipper and you see that there's 80 of a listing? It's a lot harder for you to corner the market or buy the bottom few because it's a race to the bottom when the supply is so high. So the supply and demand is skewed and as time goes on and people keep sending in the same rookie card the same rookie card if there aren't people buying them to keep you're going to just have flippers trying to buy and then price higher buy and then price higher which is what we're seeing now with the star stock a price so in my opinion the market is inflated and the final end user, the collector who buys the card, is going to have to wait a long time to get his cards. In fact, my favorite exploit on StarStock so far has been buying StarStock B cards that are quite underpriced versus eBay. Because if you have a card that goes to eBay, it can still be in near mint condition, which is a PSA 7, and people don't often think about that. You can buy a Star Stock B, get it home, flip it to eBay as near mint, and nearly double your money. So there are a lot of opportunities there on Starstock, but there's a lot of stuff that needs to be worked out. And I'm just a voice in the ether. I'm just a ghost out there, just a shadow in the weeds. So my opinion is just that. It's my opinion. I could be wrong on all of this, and everyone's experience so far could be tip-top candy land. There are some good things about Starstock as well. It's not all just mm, mm, mm. I do like that it's instant. That's their biggest draw. But again, you got to be able to get those cards out in a timely manner for a good price. I 
I also like the cleanliness of their collection interface. You can see what cards you have and everything functions instantly, which means you can take a card and price it if you want to, sell it on the marketplace, or if you buy a card, you can immediately have that card in whatever multiples you want for whatever price you want. So there are some good things about Starstock right now. I also really like that they have sealed wax, so thumbs up on that. And the sealed wax doesn't need any sort of weird grading approval or anything, so that makes a lot of sense. In fact, Starstock might do better with sealed wax than they do with individual cards as time goes on. I also like the CEO of Starstock. Scott sounds like a really cool guy. He's been open and engaging when you've seen him in interviews, and that is going to be an asset for Starstock going forward. So I hope that you guys don't take this as a bash, bash, bash. I really want Starstock to succeed. I'd like to see more formats like this. So I would urge you to give Starstock a try. After everything I've said in this video, it's still a new format. It's still being worked on. And I do believe that there's a lot of potential there. And perhaps the issues that I have are either misplaced or they'll be addressed in time. Either way, you should make your best decision about Starstock. Check it out. See if you like it. And that's the best tip that I can give you as somebody who wants you to succeed. Whether you're just collecting or you're buying or selling sports cards and that's your goal at the end of the day your research is what matters I can come on here and tell you what I'm buying and what you might make money with somebody else can give you their opinion as well it's your decision it's your money you live with the consequences and you would rather own those consequences than have somebody else affect them so you can't get upset that hey this guy told me to do this and it didn't work you made the decision so you are the one that screwed up if you did this so I I want you guys to just be very clear one of the best things that you can do for yourself as a sports card investor is to own your decisions whether it's life whether it's poker whatever it is you own your decisions what you do ripples through eternity when I'm considering an investment I like to model out likely scenarios these things happen what's likely to happen if these things happen what's likely to happen if this continues on this path these are the likely outcomes and just model it out even if you have to draw it up, it can give you some clarity as to what might happen and you can assess what's more likely or what's less likely and really hone your decision making process. We've been having a lot of fun doing card breaks on the channel, so if you haven't gotten in with us yet, maybe consider doing so. Smack that subscribe button in the face for me and click like so that YouTube knows you should probably watch this video. And I appreciate you guys listening to my Star Stock review without any sort of prejudice or judgment against me. I've got no pitchfork here. I just want things to be better for the user. For the user. I still can't believe you, you called it a pregnancy, man. What are you doing? I'll catch you in nine months on the flip side.